everyone. Karibu and welcome to the link, Life in Christ SDA Church, where we are connecting people to Christ. You're probably wondering, how are we connecting people to Christ? Well, you can join us every Sabbath morning until this crisis is over on Facebook um, by sending to me um, your email address. And you can contact me at vmorris56 at icloud.com. And then you can also join us on Zoom at 11 o'clock for our kids time where we will have Sabbath entertainment for your children so that you won't get bored. So thank you for worshiping with us here at The Link, Life in Christ, SCA Church. Happy Sabbath, Happy Sabbath family. family. I hope everybody's doing fine and your family members are also doing fine. We are praying especially for the people working in the healthcare May God continue to protect you yes. and keep your family members safe. So. Yes, and especially our first responders, we thank you very much for the work you're doing. We just want to wish you all the best and make sure you are safe. For everyone else, please, please remember to wash your hands 20 seconds with soap and water. If you don't have soap and water nearby or there somewhere, carry a sanitizer, make sure you rub your hands thoroughly. Please do not touch your nose, do not touch your mouth, do not touch your eyes, do not touch your face. Put on a mask and please wear gloves. Most of all, make sure that when you buy groceries out there, when you bring them home, please leave them out for 10 to 15 minutes before you bring them in. And if you can, that is whatever you can wash, please wash with soap and water. And whatever you can sanitize, do the same. Use uh, um, the sanitized wipes and wipe all the other products that you're able to sanitize before you store them in the fridge or in your pantry or wherever you store your food. We want to wish you all a very happy Sabbath, a safe Sabbath. And we want to thank God for bringing us this far because we haven't had any incident so far. And so Lord, we thank you for your grace, for your mercy, and for abundant love. We pray that you'll have a wonderful Sabbath. And as you share with us in praise and worship, we ask that you may be filled with the Spirit as we are experiencing the same Spirit here. May the Lord lead you all and guide you for the rest of the day. Amen. When upon us billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. When you look at others with their lungs and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy, your reward in heaven nor your Lord on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. 
Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And you'll be surprised at what the Lord has done. Under his wings I'm safely abiding. Though the night depends on tempest a while, still I can trust him. I know he will keep me. He has redeemed me and I am his child. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can save Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Under his wings, what a refuge in sorrow, how the heart yearningly turns to his rest. Often when earth has no power for my healing, there I find comfort and there I am blessed. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever? Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Under his wings, O oh, precious enjoyment, there will I hide till life's trials are o'er. Sheltered, protected, no evil can harm me. Resting in Jesus, I'm safe evermore. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can save under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for another opportunity to worship you and to learn more about you. And we pray that, Lord, you will bless the word that we are going to listen today and May it nourish our spiritual st uh, strength and may we grow closer to you and we pray Lord that you'll be with people who are sick and suffering, those who are in the hospital as well as in their own homes and especially we remember um, Denise and her son Ron and Kieran who are in New York who needs a special uh, prayer for their recovery. We pray that Lord you'll touch your, stretch out your healing hand that they may recover soon. And we pray for all the doctors and the nurses uh, around the globe taking care of these coronavirus victims. And we pray that Lord you'll be with them and be with the people who are sick too. And Lord, draw us closer to you. We know that we are living in the last days. And help us, Lord, to focus on the heavenly things so that all these worldly things may grow dim in our sight. And forgive us our sins and shortcomings. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And good morning to everyone. It's a privilege to be able to join you from our home to your homes as we worship the Lord today. He has uh, allowed us to see another Sabbath day and um, he has called us together to worship him in spirit and in truth. And uh, even as we prepare to uh, worship him in uh, giving, I would just like to uh, bring to your attention that this week's offering is for the Christian Record Services. Um, there are different ways, there are different options that you can use in your giving today. Um, the first one is the website that's listed um, 
And then there's Cash App. You can use Cash App um, with the uh, link SDA Church as it's listed there. And you can also call the treasurer and uh, he can walk you through uh, how to make your giving more effective. Um, even as you give, please also remember uh, our local church budget. And um, as the Lord leads you to, to give, may you do so as he has blessed you so that we can continue to operate as a life in Christ. May you have a blessed Sabbath day as we all continue to worship God. Amen. Happy Sabbath, friends. I'm glad to be with you. And we're going to talk about the resurrection. I like to talk about the resurrection at Easter time. And we're going to start with some eggs to help me because we're going to just talk about some of the things that happened to Jesus before the resurrection. So let's start with him coming into the town and people treating him just in a really special way as if he were royalty and he came in first egg we're going to open that one and he came in um, on a donkey you see okay so he came in on a donkey and they were waving branches because palm branches really that's what you would do for somebody that was very special a royal person and so they were waving these branches and that's what our first first egg is representing what the people were doing the bible says most of the crowd spread their coats in the road and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them in the road the crowds going ahead of him and those who followed were shouting Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Matthew 28, 8 and 9. So that's how he came in. We go a little further and he has a dinner with his disciples. And at that dinner, they were just sharing bread and they were sharing uh, grape juice, uh, drink. He knew that um, things were going to change and he would have to leave. And so our second egg um, just represents the bread that they shared. And they would break bread together and that that's how they fellowshiped in those days. Um, just as we might have dinner together now, that's what they did in those days. The Bible says, while they were eating, Jesus took a piece of bread, gave a prayer of thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Take it and eat, he said. This is my body. Because he knew that his body would be broken. So the bread represents, as they broke it and they shared it, it represents his broken body. Matthew 26, 26. Then we have to talk about Judas, who was one of the disciples, but he went to the chief priests and asked, what will you give me if I betray Jesus? They counted out 30 silver coins. And so this was, this was terrible because it was, it was like your best friend betraying you. And so the next egg represents those coins. I don't know if you can see them, but those coins represented what Judas was going to do, what he was going to take to give Jesus to the authorities so that they would know this is the man you've been looking for, that they wanted killed. And so the coins represented what Judas took. And that was, that was 30 pieces of silver coin. So he finally gets to Pilate and Pilate wanted to please the crowd. And so he set a criminal free named Barabbas. And 
he had Jesus whipped and he handed him over to be crucified. In the Bible, Mark 15 tells us that they whipped him. And so our next egg represents what was a whip. And they would take a, 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 a leather strap and it had barbs in it so that it would really hurt your skin. And Jesus was whipped really, really cruel, cruel, hurtful punishment. And so our next egg has what represents the whip. And so they then stripped him of the clothes he had on and put other clothes. The Bible tells us in Matthew 27, 28 and 29, they stripped Jesus's clothes and put a scarlet robe on him. They made a crown of thorny branches and placed it on his head and put a stick in his right hand. Then they knelt before him and made fun of him. Long live the king of the Jews, they said. Matthew 27, 28, and 29. So our next egg represents what they did. They gave him another robe, and this represents the robe. And they made a crown of thorns, and this is kind of what that might look like. And if you look really carefully, this is actually a very sharp thorn. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that thorn there? I actually stuck myself, but there are some really sharp thorns on here. Imagine a sharp crown of thorns pressed into your head. And that's what they did to Jesus. So the clothes that he had were gone, they put other things on him, and then they pressed this crown of thorns on his head. So, the next hard thing in this story, you know, he had to bear the cross. And he was weak from being beaten, but they still wanted him to bear the cross. It was actually too heavy for him at this point and they had to find someone. So our next egg has a symbol of the cross that he carried. Heavy, heavy, heavy cross. And he had to carry this cross all the way up to the hill where they would be put to death. And so stumbling and fainting and having to get help, this egg represents the cross that he had to carry. Imagine what he was going through. When they got to the cross, of course, they nailed him to the cross. And so our next egg represents the nails that they put in his wrists, right here, and in the top of the foot. And the nails represent that part of the crucifixion when they actually put those nails here and in the foot. And these represent that next part, which was painful and terrible. So they wanted to humiliate him and make fun of him. And so they created a sign and our next egg represents the sign. And the sign said in the Bible, in Luke 23, 38, the sign said, above him were written these words, this is the king of the Jews. And that's the sign that they put above him. And they were trying to make fun of him. They weren't really recognizing recognizing him as a king. So it got even worse. The Bible says one of them ran up at once and took a sponge. He filled it with vinegar and vinegar is very bitter and sour, put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. That's in Matthew 27, 48. 
one of the soldiers then plunged his spear into Jesus' side and at once blood and water poured out. That's in John 19.34. So our next egg is showing us the sponge and this represents the sponge where they were trying to give him the bitter, bitter vinegar and the spear. The spear represented the soldier that actually pierced his side. And this was, they thought, the final blow for Jesus. So that's what our next egg represents. Well, finally, they took Jesus's body and it was wrapped in those days. The Jewish tradition was to wrap it with spices and strips of linen. And so our next egg represents the linen, which is a very, very, very fine, beautiful white linen. And the next egg represents the wrapping of the body in the linen. And the Bible says, taking Jesus's body, they wrapped it with spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs, John 19, 40. So after this, the body had to be laid in a grave and the graves for wealthy people back then were in caves. And so a man named Joseph decided to lay Jesus's body in this new place that he had made for himself. And so the Bible says Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a new linen sheet, and placed it in his own new tomb, which he had just recently dug out of solid rock. Then he rolled a large stone across the entrance to the tomb and went away. And so our next egg represents the rock that Joseph rolled. They rolled this rock in front of the tomb and you know the rock had to be really really heavy and big because no one was allowed to go into that tomb they didn't want anyone to bother the body and they did not want jesus to rise because he had said that's what would happen and so the next egg represents what hap what what the rock how the rock was pushed in front of the tomb and that's what this represents and of course the women came jesus's body rested through the sabbath and then the women came looking for jesus's body and the bible tells us the angel said don't be afraid for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He's risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he's risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. Matthew 28, 5 and 7. And so our very, very last egg is empty. It represents the empty tomb because the good news of the resurrection story is that Jesus rose on Sunday morning. We can be happy about that and you know they were excited about that back then. We can be happy because if Jesus rose, we have something to believe in. It means he's coming back for us one day. And that's the really, really good news about the resurrection story. Thank you so much for spending time with me. And I hope we can get together soon. For a long time I traveled down long lonely road My heart was so heavy And soon I sank low But then I heard about Jesus What a wonderful hour I'm so glad
Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I'm Bring me out, show me the way. Like a bird out of prison that's taken its flight. Like a blind man that God gave back his. Like a poor chief beggar Who found fortune in vain I'm so glad that I found out He can bring me out For his holy name Thank God I am free, free, free From this world of sin Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He could bring me out, show me the way. Thank God I am free. This world of sin, washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He could bring me out, show me the way. Today's focus text comes from Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. It says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. There's a devotion in the book that my wife and I like to read and study. It's called Under His Wings. That verse leads to a devotion. I'd like to read part of it. It says, we talk about setting goals in order to achieve success in the tasks we undertake. Fail to plan and you plan to fail, we say. One who moves about without a goal usually arrives nowhere. An aimless life benefits no one. Our hearts are in the things to which we give our time, our monies, and ourselves. We are advised to be cautious lest we allow cares and greed to take precedence over the more urgent matters of preparing for eternity. Every day we are given 24 hours. How we spend that time shows where our heart is. Every tick of the clock is one more second. We are closer to the end of time. What do we do with our lives? Let us pray. 
Father in heaven, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us. Thank you for everything you will give us, Lord. Please, as we're here to do your work and your will, allow our hearts and our minds to be open. Allow the message and everything that comes from this YouTube video to always, always be in your hands so that anyone who ever sees it, Lord, may be blessed and drawn closer to you. All these things we ask and humbly pray in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. I was asked today to speak on how evangelism. <clears throat> a few months ago, before coronavirus came into the picture, it would have been a pretty easy subject. We would have went into the book of Acts, chapter 1, where the Holy Spirit was promised, chapter 2, where the Holy Spirit came. And on the day of Pentecost, thousands were touched by the gospel. And from that point on, people spent time in each other's homes, breaking bread in the church. They did what we are called to do today, to commune together and share the gospel and bring everyone to the hope of the second coming of Jesus Christ. In today's world with the coronavirus uh, in our environment, we're not able to do that. But the Lord is blessed with the different technologies that are available. He's blessed even in a larger degree with the platforms that are available. We have things like YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, all those different platforms, emails, telephone, where we're able to reach out to even a larger community and have them learn of the gospel message. The gospel message is something that is needed to be shared all over the world for many different reasons, but the primary reason is that people around us are dying every day. And many of those people are dying without hope. They're dying not knowing about Jesus. And if you think about the impact of the coronavirus, the numbers are pretty staggering even today. Thousands of people, even here in America, have passed away. We don't really know what their relationship with the Lord was. But we do know that as Christians, we're all called to be a part of sharing that message. Now that we're not able to get out in the community and share it physically, we need to think about using alternative methods like YouTube and TikTok and emails and phone calls. And all that's fine and good, but as I prayerfully considered that topic or this topic of how evangelism, what I recognized about how evangelism all the things we do out in the community, all the things we do in our church trying to build community, is really the result of something else. You see, all throughout the Bible, there's evidence in Paul's life, in Peter's life, even in Moses' life, that something else happened before they ever committed themselves to others in the preaching of the gospel. I want to look today at a man by the name of Paul. Paul was not always Paul. Paul started out in the Bible being a man by the name of Saul. And Saul was a man that had a passion for killing Christians. And anyone that was opposed to the Roman government of the time, he would seek them out. He would go to any means to bring them back and put them to death. And then something happened to Paul. Paul had a run-in with God. 
Paul met God, Jesus Christ, on the road to Damascus. And from that point on in the Bible, he was a changed man. The rest of his life was lived in the service to the Lord and to others. He never wavered from the idea that his God came first and that everyone around him deserved to know that. They deserve to know and have the hope that he had. And he went all over the known world of the time preaching the gospel. He shared it with thousands. And what struck me about Paul was even near the end of his life, he was still reaching out to others. You can see it in the book, Second Timothy. Second Timothy, Paul's fate was almost sealed. It was near the end of his life. He was being poured out, but he was still reaching out to Timothy a man that he loved and cared for. And he was encouraging Timothy to continue the fight, continue the movement, continue his faith that he was brought up on. That's exactly what we are called to do as Christians. We are called to live out the gospel. And you know, looking at Paul, looking at Peter, even looking at Moses, once they experienced and accepted God into their hearts and their lives became focused on others. They stopped the self-seeking lifestyles that they were used to. Once they turned everything over to God, they were able to commit to others. And that's the truth, folks. And that's what we are called to do. I put a question down here. The question is, when will it be more about others and less about you? I want you to think about that because all throughout the Gospels, all throughout the Bible, we see men and women that were able to turn their lives over to God and to commit to others. I want to tell you a little personal story about myself. I was not always a Christian. I lived life much in the same way Paul lived his life. I was running hard, living that sinful way, not really having a purpose in life, just even a lot of wreckage behind, and maybe some of the people who know that are watching this today. And about 12 years ago, my father passed away, and it sort of left me free to start exploring What made sense to me. You see, my father was an atheist. My father preached atheism all of his life, and I grew up, quite honestly, in a very dysfunctional home with a lot of things going on. But 
after his passing, I was able to start searching. The Lord was knocking on my heart hard. He was saying, come back. Twelve years ago or so, I walked into the West Wilmington Seventh-day Adventist Church. And from that point on, I don't think I ever really looked back. I never, I never thought that I shouldn't be there. I'm not saying it was an easy road, but I never thought that I shouldn't be there. But I can tell you what, 12 years ago I walked in and I had not given my heart to God at that time. And I played a role for a lot of years. I was a deacon in the church. I was doing this and doing that. Anything anybody would ask, I was there. I spent, mo spent most of my time in church, working in the church and not really focusing on my relationship with God. Then about eight years ago, I decided this has got to change because I've never really been one to just pretend to be something I'm not. I couldn't get into that sort of lifestyle of being non-committed to something I'm saying I'm a part of. So I started searching and I started searching long and hard. I started praying. I had a lot of things going on around me, but I was prayerful. I was studying the Bible. I was asking the Lord for his help. And the Lord sent some people into my life, my wife, her mother, and that's when I gave my heart to God. I said, if I'm going to be into this, I'm going to be all in. And once I turned to myself, turned my heart over to God, my life changed because then it became more about others than it was about me. I can remember some time ago when my sister was diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer. She was told that she would not survive. Just a short time before that, Pastor Rick Chrisman had preached a message. The title was All In. And my sister was told that there was nothing they could do. I prayerfully committed my life to her life. No matter what would happen to me, it was going to be about her. It wasn't an easy process, folks. I remember the night she died. I remember sitting on the couch knowing that Jesus could wake her up. As they were carrying her out of the house, I knew he would, just like the widow at Nain. Jesus woke up her son knew he would wake her up. My sister never came back through the doors. And as painful as that may sound and was, I knew then that God was working in and through me. That I wasn't just pretending anymore that I wasn't living a life that wasn't focused on others. So folks, I didn't come here today to talk about all the results that come from giving your heart to God. I came to tell you how we do evangelism. We do evangelism based on the fact that we've given our heart to God and 
God tells us and commits us to others. You see, folks, we can walk through life and we might do a lot of things that seem to look good. But if they're not bearing any fruits, it quite possibly could be because the Holy Spirit isn't there. All through the Bible, we see it. The Ten Commandments tells us one through four is all about our relationship with God. All the rest is about our relationship with others. Love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. When will it be more about others and less about you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, please touch this message. Please open the hearts that hear it. And please allow it to draw others closer to you. Thank Thanks God for asking. I Humble am pray free, in your son, free, Jesus Christ. Free Amen. From this world of sin, washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, save, save, save by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He could bring me out, show me the way. I'm so glad that I found out He could bring me out. Show me the way, show me the way.